welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'd like to tell you all about an exciting development in the world of GLP-1 medications. This is a medication called Orphoglipron. I want y'all to remember that name, Orphoglipron. I think we'll be hearing a lot about it in the next six to 12 months. This is an oral GLP-1 medication that has been recently tested for type 2 diabetes and currently has testing ongoing for the use in patients with obesity. So this oral GLP-1 medication has been developed by Eli Lilly. They're the ones that make the injectable Manjaro and Zepbound. And they just released very minimal data on the completion of a phase three trial for patients enrolled in a study called ACHIEVE. Now, all of these patients had type two diabetes with a hemoglobin A1C of about seven to 9.5%. And on average, the 559 people had a hemoglobin A1C of 8%. They took oral orphoglipron or a placebo for 40 weeks, and then they looked at the data. The data showed that in patients that took the oral medication, their hemoglobin A1C dropped by about 1.3 to 1.6%, which is pretty good. And then secondarily, this was not actually the purpose of the study, but they also showed that patients on average lost about 8% of their body weight, which was for those patients about 16 pounds. Just to give you a perspective, Wagovi or Ozempic, patients that use those medications tend to lose on average about 10% of their total body weight, and patients that are on Zetbound or Manjaro tend to lose about 20% of their body weight. But in my experience, patients that have type 2 diabetes that use GLP-1 medications don't tend to lose as much weight versus those that use the medication as an anti-obesity medication. The side effects were typical for the GLP-1 class, which include nausea, vomiting, acid reflux, constipation, and diarrhea. So a lot of gastrointestinal stuff that we've seen with the other injectable GLP-1 medications. This particular trial, ACHIEVE-1, is part of numerous other studies specifically for patients with type 2 diabetes, but they're also specifically testing oral orphoglipron in a series of studies called ATTAIN, which we should be receiving information about that later on this year. And of course, everyone wants to know about cost and Eli Lilly has revealed nothing about that. But those of us in this field are hopeful that because it's an oral medication, it will be cheaper to produce, easier to store, easier to manufacture, and easier for patients to take and easier for patients to get. So my hope is that it will cost less, but we just, we don't know anything about that right now. But what makes this pill stand out is that it can be taken any time of the day with or without food. It is taken daily, but y'all probably remember another oral GLP-1 medication, oral semaglutide, also known as Ribelsis. That one was developed by Nova Nordisk, but the problem with it is that it's only available in three, seven, and 14 milligram doses, and it just simply doesn't work as well as the injectable medications. And it's kind of hard to take. There are a lot of restrictions on when you can eat and how much water and blah, blah, blah. So I, I don't tend to prescribe oral ribelsis to patients because it just doesn't work as well. My concern about the cost is that Eli Lilly is going to have a monopoly on this for a while. You know, unfortunately, Pfizer just stopped a study on an oral GLP-1 medication that they were trying to produce called Danugliprone. And unfortunately, someone in that trial had drug-induced liver damage, so they scrapped it. I was really hopeful that there would be some competition with an oral GLP-1 medication coming to the market, but that is no longer a possibility. However, as I mentioned before, oral ribelsis or oral semaglutide, Nova Nordisk is developing higher doses and they're studying 25 milligrams and 50 milligrams versus what's currently available is only 14 milligrams. Preliminary studies and preliminary of data have shown positive results with that, but I don't think that's gonna be available till early 2026 or so, if at all. And Orphoglipron, Eli Lilly is stating that they're hoping to get that out into the market, specifically for the treatment of obesity in 2025, and then for type two diabetes in 2026. So the race is on, and these companies really try to have the first drug to market so they can have a monopoly on the market 
and set the price. So as we continue to see more and more medications coming out, my hope is that once the oral orphoglipron is available, that will cause the injectable medications to go down in price as well. So the more companies that are involved, the more medications that are available, will only help these medications become more available and more reasonably priced. Stay tuned, this is an exciting field of medicine right now. Things are constantly changing, really month to month. I'll keep you guys posted with up-to-date information as I have it. Thanks for joining me.